Hey everyone, and welcome to my new video series. In this series, I'll be playing a game called Cities in Motion 2. It's a relatively new game, just came out in April this year, and it's developed by Colossal Order Game Studios and published by Paradox Interactive. Now in this game, you are running a public transit company, and your job is to create the most efficient and profitable public transit system in various cities around the world. And since I am a self-described transit enthusiast, uh, this game is definitely relevant to my interests. So uh, let's get started. In this episode, I'll be playing in the tutorial mission and hopefully show you the ropes. Alright, so here we are in the tutorial city. Uh, camera controls are pretty simple. To move around the camera, you just use the W, A, S, and D keys, like this. And if you want to zoom in, uh, you can use the mouse wheel to scroll in. And the detail gets really pretty, pretty amazing. You can go all the way down to street level like this. And if you want to uh, rotate your camera, you just click the mouse wheel or your middle mouse button like this. Now that dinging sound you see is, since we're in the tutorial, uh, that's the, just the tutorial telling me that I've done all the instructions correctly. And I can move on to the next step. So let's do that. Alright, so the f fun thing about this game is that your city has a bunch of different people and like different kind of social groups and you can try to cater your bus routes and or your tram routes or whatever to uh, come to get those people to where they want to go. So the best way I've seen this is in the data view, which I've opened up here. Now if I click buildings here, this will show me uh, what kind of buildings are in my city. So green indicates homes. So I got uh, suburbs here and some apartment buildings in the city. And the red indicates workplaces. So I got a big industrial district down here and a few office buildings in the downtown core over here. Now this is just buildings, but uh, you can actually focus the data view onto different social groups. Uh, so in this case there, I got blue collar workers. If I select this, it'll show me where the blue collar workers live, which are, and where they work. So they live, a lot of them seem to live in these two apartment complexes over here. And they all seem to work uh, in any of these, in the industrial district, any of these uh, factories over here. So yeah, that's the blue collars. Now, I'm also going to look, you can also switch to different social groups. So the white collar workers here, we got the uh, suburbs in this corner of the map here. And they, every, t every time they go to work, they go across the bridge and into this uh, downtown core and these fancy office buildings here. Now I'm going to keep this on the white collar workers because the next part of the tutorial is actually building a bus route. And I'm going to build the bus route for these white collar workers. We just go on to the next part of the tutorial. Uh, so, the tutorial, uh, can't really pronounce there. So, here we got, uh, let's open up the construction menu. Oh, thank you, tutorial, thank you. Okay, so now, uh, to build a bus line, uh, each bus line needs two different things. A depot, or depot, I guess you call it, where the buses uh, start and stop and get maintenance from, and also a bunch of stops. So, uh, so bus stops, we got several different kinds of stops here. Uh, bus stop of a sign, shelter, a shelter with bench, so pretty fancy, and two different kinds of depots. So we've got a basic bus depot, 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 I don't know what, how to pronounce it to be honest. I'll call it depot. Uh, so large bus depot which can carry more buses. So we're gonna, um, so let's build a depot, uh, depot first. So let's go over here. I already got a spot in mind here, so I'll build it right there. Okay, so and then uh, the depot is where the bus route's gonna start and stop. So uh, then you just build stops, uh, actually bus stops, uh, that where passengers can get on and off. So I'm, I'm gonna make this one take a left turn onto this road and then stop there because I wanna also make another left turn onto this on ramp right here so it can get to the suburbs over there. So I do that. And you'll notice that when I place a stop, there's this big white circle. That is the catchment area around the stop. And that basically, um, basically any uh, buildings within that catchment area, the people with living in those buildings will walk to that stop. So you can be pretty generous. You don't have to, you can make the stops overlap in some ways, but uh, you don't really have to. So, okay, so the tutorial only told me to build a few stops, but I'm actually going to make this bus line a bit longer. So I'll build a few more stops like so. 
Okay, so those are all the stops in the suburbs. Now the bus is going to go across this bridge here. And then uh, it gets a little interesting. They, there are two ways it can go. It can go on this off-ramp to the back to this road here. Or go into the downtown core onto this big four-lane uh, road here. Uh, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into the downtown core and stop there. Now the interesting thing is in this tutorial city, this long road that you see here is actually one way. So unfortunately it's, it does kind of restrict me on how I can route this uh, or create this bus route. So I'm going to actually just take a right turn and just put a few stops uh, down this one way street. Okay, um, I think I'll skip that intersection because I think uh, we already got good coverage. I'll put the next stop over here. And the final stop will be right outside of the there. Okay, so those are all our stops. Now, here, now we get to establish our bus line. So let's click next here. All right, so to establish a new bus line, you go to the transport panel down here, and you click Create New. And then you can add stops to that line. Now every line needs to start from a de uh, depot, so you click this, depot there, and then uh, now I'll just follow the road as I described before. So I'll take a left turn there, and then the next stop after that will be actually be in the suburbs way over here. So if I do this right, you can see there, I click that, it goes across the bridge. Then I'll just uh, quickly go through these stops around the suburb. Looks good. And then the next stop will be back in the downtown core. Crossing the bridge there, going down this street. Make a right turn. And then finally back at the de depot. Alright, so we got our lines completed. It's got 14 stops. And now I'm going to build myself uh, some vehicles because now we can, we can actually run some buses on it. So now let's go over to the de depot here. You click buy vehicles. And uh, the selection of the buses isn't too great right now, but I suspect that the game will provide more DLC and other expansions later to provide more different kinds of buses. But you can tell that we got three different kinds. You got the cheaper 10 seater here. Uh, so, uh, so one and a slightly a medium sized bus with 20 seats, a little bit more expensive. And then you got the double decker, which has 30 seats. Um, in this case, um, you also got you know some stats about service quality, but I think I'll go with the uh, big double decker. And uh, let's see. Oh, and the nice thing about this game is now it actually it actually estimates uh, how many buses you'll probably need on your line to provide uh, you know. Uh, full service. So in this case, it's estimated that I need four buses. So um, I think I'll be a bit more concerned. I'll buy six buses. And now, once I got the vehicles, now you'll see there's our bus. Okay, it's not the bus, that's a traffic light. Uh, can I select that bus? There we go. Alright, so now it's just going to wait there and probably make up wait, make it up make its way up that hill to the next stop there. So um, while that, while it's doing that, I'm gonna go move on to the next part of this tutorial. Oh, I just did that. Oops, I forgot to push next. Alrighty, so that's fine. Oh, there goes the bus. Oh, there's actually another bus coming in behind me. It's not so good. All right, so now every bus line has a timetable. And how the timetable works, uh, it is actually this big complicated graph thing you see there. And uh, essentially, there are different time periods uh, when, when uh, that you can set. There's weekdays, morning rushes, evening rushes, weekends, nights, and you can tell you can change the interval of when when the bus, sh how many buses should be running during that time. This interval that the, you see the arrow pointing to basically tells the depot how often you should launch a new bus. So in this case, uh, the tutorial is telling me you can increase the interval, like this, and that means by increasing the interval, your buses will become less frequent, which may or may not be a good thing. Like usually, you'll save costs, but your your passengers might get more angry because they have their buses will be more late. So I'm going to do what the tutorial says. I'm going to increase the interval to t every two hours or thirty minutes and push OK. Okay, so yeah, that's how schedule is working and. Going back to that thing, you can always 
increase, increase or decrease the interval depending on which uh, time period. So maybe during the morning rush, maybe I'll change the interval to a little bit less, maybe every hour or so, because more people will be using the buses during that time. So yeah, it gives you a bit of flexibility. I'm not sure how important it is to the game. Like usually you don't want to be spending too much time. Some people might not want to spend too much time micromanaging that sort of details, but it's, it's an interesting aspect of the game, I think. So, uh, yep, that's that. Let's move on to the next part of the tutorial. Okay, so unlike the original Cities of Motion, uh, you weren't able to actually build any roads, but now you can in Cities of Motion 2. Um, and yeah, it allows you to build more routes and that sort of thing. But um, in this tutorial city, there's not much need for a new road, so I'm just going to, just to fulfill the tutorial and make it happy, I'm going to build a road outside in the boonies here. And uh, now, so you go to the construction menu, you the build roads, th and you got several different kinds of roads. And when even in there, there's a whole different kinds of lane structure that you can choose. So some of them are like just two lane roads. Some of them are bus only lanes, which is quite kind of interesting. And also some of them have like you know, different configurations for parking lanes and you know, all those sort of things. And that's just this is just the regular roads. There are also one way roads, avenues with little medians inside of them, expressways like pedestrian streets, like it's it's a huge, it's kind of an overwhelming se selection to be honest, but um, I can see why the developers went this way. It is pretty powerful. So, um, all right, I'm just gonna build a simple regular road. Uh, let's do that, I guess. You just click uh, intersection, it'll just automatically create a intersection for you and click that. And now you set, you can set waypoints. You can, I could extend this road a bit more, but if you don't wanna do that, you just click again where you just clicked. <laughs> And it just builds the road for you like so. So yeah, you can, it allows you to un easily undo in case you uh, make a mistake. All right, so there's my little dinky road there. Not really doing very much. Uh, let's keep going. You can tell I don't really like roads as much. I like the buses and the trams a lot more here. Oh, there, there's a bus going. Pretty cool stuff there. All right, so now, uh, now, now you can, uh, let's move on to building trams. Now trams are a little different. Uh, you, they're kind of like bus routes. You also you build the same depots and stops for them, but you need to build tram tracks. So you can see the arrows pointing to tram tracks here. And the trams are basically rails you build on roads. So actually, before we move on, let's let's figure out what, how we should uh, build this thing. Let's go back to the data view. And so I built that bus route just for the white collar workers. Let's build this tram route for the blue collar workers. So back to here, um, we got these two plays, two residential areas here. We wanted to feed it into the industrial, and I'll probably make this tram line feed the whole industrial area. Now let's see if I can build. Let's start building some tram lines. All right. So I have to th also think about where the dep depot is going to be, but I'll do that later. For now, I am going to build, let's go to the industrial district first. Okay, so the tram will come into here. Let's do that. Oh, uh, this is really satisfied, but I'm gonna build the whole tram right now, so let's do that. I'll make a left turn here. And make it go all the way around like so. Oops. Now, the funny thing, you'll notice that the tram line can support, they can put them on different lanes. But what you want to do is put the tram line on the rightmost lane. Even, and because otherwise the tram will, this, when you put a tram stop, it won't actually stop. So, uh, also you'll notice there's a parking lane between. Don't worry about that. The tram doesn't need to be right next to the sidewalk. What will happen is the people will actually cross the parking lane onto your tram. Which is kind of interesting. I don't know if that actually happens in real life, but I guess that's the, one of the decisions that the developers have to make. So, okay, so I just made my tram line go into that road section there. It's so going under that bridge. That's a really long section there. And actually, uh, before I, I actually continue, I'm gonna actually turn off this route so it's easier to, for me to build the line. You can toggle the visibility using this little button here. There we go. Okay, so back to building my tram lines. Um, in this case, I'm going to make the tram line go around onto this on-ramp. And go... Let's 
gonna do a loop. It's gonna go up here. here. And then also it's gonna share the one-way street with the buses. So do all that. Looks good there. Going right turn here. Alright, and it's gonna merge here. So what's gonna happen is, yeah, there's gonna be probably be a share a tram stop where the trams will stop twice, probably around here. So because the only way to get back onto the bridge and the highway is uh, through this left turn that the bus is also here. So we'll do that. Okay, and I want to take a left turn. Oh, and that's th okay. There's my tram line. Or my tram tracks. I haven't established the line yet. I also have to build the stops and depots. I think that's the next step here. Yes. So I will. So, yep, same deal. We got different kinds of stops and different kinds of tram depots. Uh, actually, oh, that's, a, that's a bus depot. I should click trams. Yeah, I should actually pay attention. All right, so I want a large tram depot. Now I gotta think about where I'm gonna put this. I can't seem to put it there. Or well, maybe I could put it. Nah, it's not gonna work. Thing. I think I'll probably build it over here at the end of my line here. So let's see if this will work. Yep, I'm gonna blow up some houses in the meat as a result, but that's okay. Sorry, white collar workers. Alright, so you have to build the tram line inside the depot, unfortunately. I don't know why they do that, but now I can actually make the line switch like so. So there we go, all connected. Now let's build the stops. So I'll use the top, the nice shelter and bench stops on all my stops here, and then uh, build them like so. Where should I build? Let's build it there. Around the industrial district. Whoa, that one. Probably overlapping a bit too much here, but that's okay. I I like a lot of stops. Oops, I want to build that one here, I think, yes. Okay, so that's the last stop in the industrial district. And it goes all the way over here, I think. Can I build a... St I could build a stop there. It'll probably jam up traffic. I don't think that's a... Might be the best idea. So maybe I'll build one here. Maybe another one here. So actually there'll be two stops it'll share, I guess. Makes more sense. Okay, go there. There. Now let's share with the bus route. Now, um, I unfortunately I, I uh, there's a, there is a, actually a DLC to build combined bus, tram, and trolley route uh, for you know tr all the, all three of those forms of transportation, but that's that it's a DLC and it costs ninety nine cents and I. <laughs> did not bother to buy it. So, okay. So I think that is. Oh no, I'm missing something. It's gonna. I should scroll down here. It's gonna go here, take a left turn, back into the industrial district, and then I need to stop there, and a couple more stops here. There we go. Okay. Now I've got all the stops and de depots. I'm going to now establish my tram line. So same same deal here. Create a new line and stop. So I'll start from my depot and then just ram through these stops as quickly as I can. Yeah, whoever made this city is it's not the greatest roads road network I've seen. Uh, but what can I do? It's a tutorial city. Okay, so it's gonna go right turn here. Down the one-way street. Okay, and then it's gonna go on to these two stops yet again. So hopefully passengers will know which one to get on if they wanna go straight into the Industrial district. So it's going to go across that bridge again. Oh, this is. Ooh, a lot of stops already. And finally, back to the depot. Alright. 
Now, oh, it's already complained to me that we have don't have any vehicles, so we better get on that. I'll click my depot there. And we got also a different selection of trams. You got the small one, 20 seats, medium seats, or medium, 30 seats there, and 40 seats. Now, interestingly enough, the large one is more expensive, but has a slightly less service quality. The medium one has a 70%, the large one has a 60%. So I like, I like quality, to be honest, so I'll go with the medium one. Um, and, oh, it looks like we need five. Uh, I'll, do, I'll do six here. All right, so there's our tram line. I'll hide it here. And as you can see, there it goes. Ready to service the hardworking blue collar workers of Tutorial City. Okay, and we got that. All right, so now we're into the more uh, economic parts of this uh, tutorial. So there's an economy panel down here where you can take out loans. So I'm gonna just push that button there. I have ten thousand more dollars, but I gotta pay that off at a certain interest rate. I, I guess in this game, in this tutorial, we got tons of money, so that might not be important. But I, I suspect that in the campaign that I'll play later, uh, it might become more important. So it's good to know. All right, and there's also a ton of data here. Next to the data graph, you can also look at, at graphs, and there are all these little different things you can look at. You can look at network coverage. Uh, how popular your company is. Um, in this case, the tutorial is asking me to go look at the company value. Not sure how to interpret this. It's a bunch of lines and stuff, but uh, I guess uh, it might become more important as I go on. I haven't looked through any most of these things, so it'll be pretty interesting to look through those later. All right, so next part. Uh, oh, so ticket prices. Going back to the economy panel, you can set ticket prices for your different... Um, different routes here. So uh, you'll notice there's also uh, several different fare zones, which we'll get, I'll get to in a minute, but there's a basically a base uh, fare, uh, fare um, for each different kind of mode of transportation. And you can also set, using these arrows here, you can actually set uh, them across the board, across all your zones. Um, in this case, um, Toro's telling me to set the price uh, prices of my tickets down 20 cents. So I guess I'll we do that. Uh, maybe I'll give the uh, <coughs> sorry white collar workers a bit of a break there. And you'll notice that the um <coughs> sorry, I gotta. You'll notice that the uh, ticket uh, prices, uh, if they show as green, that means your ticket prices are probably too low. <coughs> and you'll still notice some of the other ticket prices are in yellow, or they can also be in orange or red. And that usually means that the ticket prices become are too high. And this will fluctuate because the there's a it does simulate an economy uh, like where you know where you have eco economic booms and busts like um, uh, recessions and that sort of thing. So usually when a recession happens, the the your passengers are be, will be less willing to pay higher prices. You have to sometimes lower your prices to accommodate them. So uh, that's that. Now let's now fare zones are interesting. You'll notice that uh, if you travel. In most cities, there are different zones that you you travel in, and if you cross uh, more zones, you have to pay more. You can see that in the fare fare prices here. But you can in this game, you can actually set the zones yourself as well. So there's a little thing called Define Zones down here, and if I click the it, actually all this city is actually in one zone, so actually in Zone A. If I click that, you'll see it's all in yellow there. <coughs> but um, I pro it probably is unfair for you know people who are you know just making short trips to have to pay the same price as people crossing the bridge. So what I'm going to do is actually make this uh, western part of the city my um, zone B. So now people that cross the bridge now have to pay a slightly higher fare, which I think is a little bit more fair to be honest. Okay, so that's my zones. All right, so oh, and you can also suggest the wages of your employees in this uh, employees tab here. And you got your uh, bus drivers, your maintenance workers that help keep your uh, vehicles in tip-top shape, and also fare inspectors, which is a kind of, I found quite an interesting addition. It looks, I guess, in the tutorial city, um, there's not that many people who are not paying their fares because they're. In, Maybe the prices are not too bad, but I guess I suspect that later on fare evasion might become a bigger problem. So 
they might become a bit more important. But anyway, the tutorial tells me to build, um, or actually not to build, to decrease, oh, not decrease, why am I decreasing my, I want to pay them more, not less. I'm, I'm a benevolent <laughs> CEO of my transit company. Okay, so, yep, did that, and now we're on the final spot of, final part of the tutorial. So, uh, in this game, you can keep building your routes and stuff, but some to make things interesting, there'll be some objectives that'll come up that will come up over here that you can complete, and if you complete them, in t they might have a time limit in some cases, then you will get a benefit, maybe more cash or maybe a new kind of vehicle. So, yeah, it's kind of like quests in if you play any sort of RPG games. Um, so in this case, in the tutorial, uh, it's asking me to build a metro line. And if I do that, I'll get $5,000 cash. That's not too bad. So I'll accept that quest. And now I will... Well, actually, let's go do that. Let's build a metro line. So let's close this guy off. Now, the thing, the fun thing with this is there is also... Most metros are usually underground. Um, it's not... By default, it's not usually like that. So I'm going to go construct a metro track. And by default, it goes, you build your metro tracks on, you know, like, uh, you can build them over ground, but you can also build, um, oops, you can build them at different heights. So in this case, there's an underground view over down here in the bottom left. You can click this. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just going to build a very short metro line. It doesn't really serve any groups, but I just want to demonstrate how you can build these under sort of underground things. So there, if you click somewhere, you can click the page down or page up buttons, and that'll set the height of your uh, or of your uh, construction. So I'm going to build this underground line, perhaps down this street, like this. And now you can see the metro line there. And I'm going to build a very straightforward line here. And there we go. I got my underground tunnel. It's probably very expensive, but I don't really care at this point. And it's also, yep, two tracks going in either direction. All right, so now I'm going to get me some stations. Oh, that's a lot of overlap there. It's kind of hard to see. But I'm going to build a stop right at here. I know it's kind of hard to see. Because all those build make this a very simple two-stop metro system. Put one over here. And you'll notice that when I build a stop, it automatically gives me a nice platform before this train will stop and also builds me a little entrance so you can notice when I built this entrance here this connects automatically connects up to the street up to here so it's I found that pretty cool okay so I got my line uh, let's build a depot for my metro system I'll make this a small one I don't want to too complicated here oh I also have to set the height of this guy as well so to four meters this is going to connect as well. Hmm. It's going to work? Not sure. It's not the greatest underground interface I've noticed, so... It looks really strange. Maybe I'll build it on this side. How does that work? Oh, I see. It's a switch. I'll do that then, I think. Not sure if this is gonna work. Oh, it connects up to the road. Why would it do that? That's interesting. I'll just see what happens. That's interesting. It. That's not what I want. Is that? Oh, great! It just blew up some buildings and just put my depot not connecting to the road or to the rail. It connected to the road. That's not useful at all. Is pretty dumb. Okay, well, let's try this again. So, small depot, underground view. I want it to be pretty deep. Oh, I think I understand. Oh, now I understand why. Most metros, the depot's up above ground, so I need actually need to build. I need to build a connector up to uh, ground level. So, I need to actually extend this off. Maybe I'll maybe I'll build it off to my uh, to my road in the boonies there. So let's do that. I'm gonna set this down to four meters, twelve meters. I don't know what's appropriate here. Hmm. 
Yeah, I've, as you can tell, I haven't really figured out the whole Nitro thing. It's not quite as intuitive as... Ah, there we go. Alright, so let's go up to 8 meters, and then maybe bring it up back up to ground level. There we go. So now... That's better. There, so now you see the metro line coming out of the tunnel there. I'm going to now build my depot. Please. Excellent. All right. Now, uh, I got my stops, my depot. Now it's now we can just establish the line. So let's go here, create a new one. Okay, so it's going to go from the depot. I probably need to turn on underground view. Uh, oh. oh, okay. I guess this will be... Hmm, maybe I'll build one more stop here. That's probably makes, makes a bit more sense. Depot, depot, depot. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. All right. Uh, back to this metro line. Depot. So stop there. Stop there. It's gonna. I think it will turn around. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. There's no available route from the previous stop. Okay, so how does it turn around? That is a good question. Hmm. Maybe it needs an actual loop. It's very odd, to be honest. Well, I gotta set this down to underground there. Okay, so you do that. Wow, that looks weird. Uh, nope, not quite what I wanted. Uh, let's make it a bigger loop here. Yeah, metro systems are actually work, work like this. This is not terribly intuitive, to be honest. Or maybe I can just make two depots. Ah, maybe that's a better idea. Let's, but no, I have to make... Oh dear. Okay, let's do that. That big, humongous loop-de-loop -loop thing. No, you don't like that. Why? Why? Oh, oh, okay, oh. Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, close enough. I like that. Okay, good enough. It looks really stupid, but... <laughs> yeah. It's very odd that they didn't put any easy, easy way. Like, if a, you know, track ends there, you should just have some switches to go on the other side. But that's kind of weird. Okay, maybe, maybe I'm just not doing this right. But all right, so back to here. I'm gonna add my stops. Let's let's do this right here. Let's do it again. So add my stops here. Here, yes things in the way. And then it should be able to get back. Yes, good. And then back to the depot. Oh, and I complete my objective. But I uh, I made a line. I want I want to see it in action. So let's get my depot here. Oh, no, no, no I don't want to do that. De depot, give me depot. There we go. My vehicles. Okay, what do we got here? 50% service quality, kind of small. Ooh, that's a big one. 70%. Let's build a smaller one. And one train. Uh, let's build two. I know I'm going to hide this. Oh, there it goes. Woohoo! And we have a metro. It's a terribly strange metro, but it works for me. Alright, so that concludes this tutorial. Um, in the next episode, I'm going to actually start the campaign, and I have no idea what I'm going to expect there, but hopefully it will be quite entertaining. So thanks for watching, guys, and see you next episode.